Welcome to Scandal Water, where the tea is hot and the conversation lively. Your hosts, Candy and Ashley, will discuss a peculiar story somehow related to the entertainment industry. This podcast might not change the world, but it just might satisfy your thirst for an intriguing tale. Oh, it's that time of day. Tune in and hear what the ladies say. It's time to bend your ear when the silver screen appears. Stories about the stage and screen and everything in between. So come on and join the fun. The curtain opens in three, two, one. Stories and scandal water. It's where. Hi, Ashley. Hello, Kendi. How are you today? I'm just great. <laughs> well, good, because we're getting ready to hit a heavy topic. Oh, no. <laughs> so prepare yourself. Okay. Okay, there's good coming from it. All right. Okay, just but, but be ready. All right, I'm ready. Be- I'm stealing myself. Okay, good, because I've got Fortifying some... Fortifying st- my insides. I've got some statistics to throw at you. Oh, God. All right, okay. you're ready? I'm ready. Okay. In a press release from March of last year, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services referenced a study that had been published in the American Medical Association's journal, JAMA Pediatrics, and it gave a lot of statistics about what's been going on with the mental health of our mm. young people. Mm. So I'm going to read some of these statistics, okay. okay? Between 2016 and 2020, the number of children ages 3 to 17 diagnosed with anxiety grew by 29%. Three, age 3? Three? 3 to 17. And those with depression rose by 27%. From 2019 to 2020, there was a 21% increase in children with behavior or conduct problems. Mm. The proportion of children with preventative medical care visits dropped by 9%, and the proportion with unmet health care needs grew by 32%. Children's physical activity decreased by 18% between 2016 and 2020. And now to think about parents for a minute, the number of parents who reported difficulty coping with parenting demands increased significantly from 2019 to 2020. And finally, the proportion of young children whose parents quit, declined, or changed changed jobs due to childcare challenges increased by 34%. So basically, some of this sounds like it's COVID related, yeah. some of it's not. No. But the summary of this is in the past five to six years, there has been a significant increase in the mental health struggles that our kids are having. Mm-hmm. And our parents are struggling too. In many cases, they're struggling more with parenting, or they're dealing with things like lost jobs, mm-hmm. job changes, challenges with their own mental health, not having access to the medical care that their family or that they themselves might need. And Mm -hmm. all these things are coming down on our kids. Mm -hmm. They're affecting our kids. Mm -hmm. And so this last week of January, Mm -hmm. we thought, why not do something different? We spent the first four weeks looking at different individuals, you know, artists in in some form or another and how they navigated, you know, the bends and the roads that they encountered. But for this last week, we're going to come about this a different way. We're We're going to take a bend. We are. Mm. We're going to think about the bend in the road for our young people, the challenges that they face, and how the arts Hmm. can help them. I like that. Yeah. Now, this idea actually came to us by way of a listener. Mm, Yes. You guys have probably heard us suggest that people give us ideas or give us some feedback. We have obviously a website. I hope you've heard us reference that. On that website, we have a way that you can submit suggestions or feedback. Feedback. Yes. And so this particular listener, her name is Jennifer Shamala, reached out to us to share that her daughter, Ella, had had an experience with an amazing organization called Positively Arts, which operates out of Las Vegas. Mm. And so we kind of put this together. We're thinking about this topic, right. this theme. And as we looked at some of the information that Jennifer had sent to us, and she shared with us some great things that her daughter had achieved through mm-hmm. her work with this organization, her participation, we thought... Thought, hmm, this seems like a nice fit. So what we're going to share with you right now, this is going to be a little bit of a two-parter, but we thought we would talk about the impact that theater okay. could have on young people okay. by honing in specifically on this one particular organization as an example. Okay. 
Positively Arts. Now, from their website, they list their mission as this, to empower kids for life in our community by utilizing the tools of artistic discovery and performance to fortify students' social and emotional development and creative and critical thinking skills. And on that same website, they share their story. And just to give you a quick little summary, what what they point out is in 2014, there was a woman who happened to have a master's degree from Harvard University in arts and education. Her okay. name is Polita Simpson. Oh, yes, yes. So just to break in here, like yeah. part of me is sounding like I don't know what you're talking about, but part of me is because you had me watch the material, mm-hmm. but you did not tell me the angle that you were going to take for this episode. Okay. So that's why it may be coming across like, wait, does she know or not know what's <laughs> happening? Both. I know and I don't know. Okay. So just wanted to make that clear. But yes, I remember Polita and I thought she sounded amazing. She did. Yeah. And we're going to actually hear a little oh, bit good. from her in a second. I'm going to play that clip or part of that clip that you probably, I think it's probably the one you looked at. Yeah. But Polita, with her background and her degree, she wanted to create a different type of arts organization, one that was really focused on meeting the developmental needs of children. Mm -hmm. And so she's the one who's behind creating this award-winning nonprofit, which again is called Positively Arts. Now, she does a really nice job explaining. She really does. She does. So we're going to play you just not even two minutes. It'll be a a little under two minutes of Polita's explanation of what Positively Arts is about. Positively Arts is a 501c3 nonprofit, and we use the arts to empower kids for life, to build confidence and create resilience in kids who might be suffering from any kind of social, emotional, or physical trauma. And we use the performing arts as a way for them to just gain confidence and love who they are. We want these kids to love themselves, not because they're a great performer, but because they have the courage to perform. Kids are bombarded with. You got to be perfect. You got to get straight A's. You got to get this grade to get into that college. You got to do this extracurricular. Looks good on your resume. Ah, I just wanted to create a place where kids can come and be. And we created programming taught by professionals. So kids can learn directly from the Broadway stars, the America's Got Talent, the, the voice, American Idol. We bring them to that studio and you come and you learn from the best. We find our kids through Boys and Girls Club, Cure for the Kids Foundation, Nevada Childhood Cancer Foundation, our partnership with Hope Means Nevada. Pretty much, if you're a kid, we have a home for you. So whether you're a cancer survivor, whether you're a student who's battling with any kind of insecurity, we have kids in our program who have dealt with suicide, who have been bullied, kids who come to us with zero confidence, and in and through the arts, through our program, They leave these confident, resilient individuals ready to take on the world. All we want is to feel connected. What's the one thing that can connect all of humanity? The arts. Man, I am buying what she's selling. I mean, what a beautiful presentation of their mission and the the goals that they have. It inspired me to be like, we need to do that with our theater. Yeah. And as she mentioned, because of the passion and because what they're doing is so valuable, all these people help. They volunteer. I mean, this is a nonprofit. So Mm -hmm. these Broadway stars or these people that are involved in the arts all around their area from, she mentioned, The Voice or American Idol, like they come and they want to support this mission too. I just, oh yeah, it really touched me. Well, something else that she mentioned, I didn't uh, have us listen to the entire clip, but after we stopped, she goes on to say that money is not an object. That's what I also love too, Mm -hmm. is that it didn't matter if if you couldn't afford it, they would still take you. Yeah. She makes a big deal about, Mm -hmm. we will find a way. Mm -hmm. If you want to be involved in this, you reach out to us, we Mm -hmm. will make it happen. And she also clearly says, it is not about talent. They are not about creating performers. They are about the child. It's about the heart. Yeah, it wasn't. It's not about competition. All kids are welcome. So the reason why Jennifer reached out to us is because again, her daughter, Ella, who is now an eighth grader, had the opportunity to participate in their programs for several years. Oh, several years. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, Ella is now in Kentucky. She's been here, I think, around a year. So before I go on and tell you a little bit more about her experience with the program or let her tell you about that, let's just pause for a second 
agent to meet Ella, who was kind enough to send us some of her thoughts via audio clips. Yes. Yeah. Hi, my name is Ella. I'm 13 years old. I'm in eighth grade and I am crazy about performing, whether it be acting, singing, or public speaking. I especially enjoy being in the plays at the Oldham County Arts Center. And I also really enjoy volunteering at the Oldham County Historical Society. So that's Ella, and she learned about Positively Arts when she was attending third grade at a private school in Las Vegas. She heard about it from her teacher, who, by the way, happens to be someone who has been nominated for a Tony for her days on Broadway. Well, that's awful nice. I know. So this teacher, D. Lee Lively Torty, is a longtime educator who loves the arts, and what happened was, back in the day, she had been performing on Broadway and Smoky Joe's. Smoky Joe's Cafe. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Her claim to fame was her performance in the song, Teach Me How to Shimmy. Oh, I saw that video. It's really good. We're we're definitely going to post that on show notes because she is talented. But as this third grade teacher to Ella, what happened was one day the kids had been asked to do some presentations. It was President's Day and they were supposed to do some speeches pretending to be either the president or the first lady. Uh Well, Ella had done her presentation. She was Hillary Clinton, apparently. And right when she finished, her teacher came up and spoke to her. I'm going to let her share how this came about. And then she goes and then says something that is, well, pretty important to me. Have you ever thought about trying theater before? And then the rest is history. She also had emailed my mom about Positively Arts too. And my mom wanted me to get involved with it because it would build my confidence, social skills, and friendships. And she thought that this program might be the one to do that. And, well... You see, the theme of this is bend in the road, and my bend in the road was that I had been dealing with a lot of anxiety and later was dealing with bullying. So that was something that Ella and her mom brought out was Mm -hmm. that this was a program that was really good for Ella because she did have some of her own struggles. And so she got involved with Positively Arts and it apparently was... It sounded like it worked. She sounded very confident. Yeah, it actually did. That's one of the things that she talked about was how it really not only grew her love for performing, but it developed her confidence. Mm -hmm. And as we've said before, their goal is to empower students. And I think that that really sounds like it was the case yes, with Ella. It does. Yeah, one of the things that she talked about was being very proud of the fact that she was chosen to host this event that they held every year called Get Launched Vegas because they're a nonprofit. Right. They have to bring in money. Sure. So this is their biggest fundraiser of the year. And their format is basically the same as American Idol. It's open to all students in the surrounding area. And Ella got to be a host in 2021. That's a big deal. So in this little clip that we're going to play next, she talks about that, but she also shares a few other highlights from her experience with Positively Arts. Well, I wouldn't be where I am today without my experience with Positively Arts. The executive director, Polita Simpson, was always there to coach me and show me what I needed to do to get to the next level. My years with her will stay with me always. Her creativity to find that next experience that makes everyone feel like a superstar is like no other. In 2021, I was selected to be a student host For the Get Launched Vegas show, I introduced contestants and interviewed them during the finale. She knew that I enjoyed speaking in front of crowds, and it was such an honor. I improvised a bit, adding some humor to the show, which was cool because I love making people laugh. The celebrity judges told me they enjoyed my personality on stage, and my love of comedic performance began that night. Our super fun MTV project I'll never forget too. Each of us got to make a professional MTV style music video with a professional production studio, and some of us sang with a live band. When it was all done, we created a group thriller dance video, and then we got to watch the whole program at a local movie theater. During my first summer camp, we were surprised by a finalist from America's Got Talent who is from Las Vegas, Daniel Emmett. Lita showed us a video of him singing, and then he came out from behind the stage singing. It was such a surprise. He then came over and gave us advice about our show that was coming up. (laughs) What a learning experience that was. 
So what I really appreciated about that clip was I feel like Ella gave us several examples mm-hmm. of the types of activities that mm-hmm. they do there. Mm-hmm. So I felt like I understood their program a little right. better. They have camps. They have these mentoring programs. They have shows and different projects. They do so many different elements. So it sounds like they're really varied. Yeah. The other thing I loved was I think you might have had a chance to see this too. The um, clip of yes. that. Yes. Jennifer shared with us, she had a video clip of that experience where Daniel Emmett had come out. They started it with him singing on the screen Mm -hmm. and then he picked up singing live and walked out and the kids just lost their minds. They They were so excited. I really enjoyed the way he interacted with them. He did. He was very gentle and kind and he took questions from everyone, some in the back, some in the front. He made sure everyone was heard. I liked that. Yeah. And then he gave great advice Mm -hmm. and it was, I just keep coming back to that word empowering, like so respectful of these kids and who they are and they're you know bringing with them like I think I feel like everybody in that room felt so valued yeah like no question was too silly you know what I mean like he answered everything no matter what the question was yeah so well I felt like that was a great example again to reiterate Ella was with Positively Arts for several years in fact I believe she moved to Kentucky when she was a seventh grader so probably around four years that's a long time and she has spoken about its impact on her already and you heard her give the big shout out to Mm -hmm. Polita Mm -hmm. but in a later clip that she shared with us she talked about how she took those things with her Mm -hmm. she talked about when she came to Kentucky she had the confidence to make friends yeah she's already been auditioning and getting in plays in her her new hometown and she mentioned that she has been on the crossroads radio program in the grade yes so in terms of empowering you for life it's definitely already changed Mm -hmm. her life yeah as Ashley and I you know we're talking about those clips and and the idea that Jennifer had shared with us to to focus on Positively Arts, it just really struck us what a wonderful example Mm -hmm. of how the arts and theater and performance can be used to really build people up, especially our young people, and and especially our young people who are struggling in some way. Especially when you take out the element of the competition, if it's just a welcoming atmosphere and it gives them that confidence and they don't have to worry about competing with somebody else, like you're Mm -hmm. welcome here. Everybody's welcome here. Right. And we're all rooting for you. Mm -hmm. And you are successful. You know, we we find ways to help you grow and help you build. And you can take those skills anywhere. Absolutely. You know, that's a point that Polita made in one of her clips. She talked about whether you want to be a performer or whether you want to be a heart surgeon or a teacher or whatever. This is going to go with you. This is going to help you. Well, thank you to Jennifer and Ella for not only a fabulous idea, but also for sharing with us some great audio clips and video clips. In fact, you know, we have um, and pictures. Yes, we are going to share some of those on our Facebook site and in our show notes. Yes. different places yes. so you'll be able to check it out and thank you also to Positively Arts we yeah. so appreciate what, what you're doing program. Yeah. well we're going to talk about a different form of art therapy but first let's take a short break all right hey everybody I wanted to let you all know about a new perk we're going to be adding since season two launched you may have heard our occasional shout outs at the top of the episodes In the new year, we're going to offer that perk to any of our Buy Me A Coffee supporters that are interested. So if you'd like to take advantage of this opportunity and hear your voice on our podcast, visit www.buymeacoffee.com slash scandalwaterpod. You don't have to sign up for anything. We won't spam your email, and there are options for a one-time donation or a monthly gift. Either way, you get the double bonus of making your Scandal Water debut, and you're helping us keep the stories brewing. Cheers! We are back and ready to talk about a different form of therapy for young people. Do you know anything about art therapy itself? Not the arts, but art. Right. Art therapy is when you can create art or just a way to process emotion or to stumble your way through things you're trying to work out. I think it's a beautiful method of therapy. I knew almost nothing about art therapy. Mm -hmm. You know, I make inferences. Mm -hmm. And so when I went into this topic, I was definitely cold. But it's funny because I thought, okay, let, let me let me just make some guesses here. And I started thinking about adult coloring. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A lot of adults color for anxiety relief. 
grief. And well, we, we were talking about before the show started, I organize when I have something that I'm really stressed out about. And I've had some things past a week or so that have been kind of stressed. Mm-hmm. And you are looking at the fruits yes, of that stress. And it, it looks fabulous. And to me, it is a form of art because I was looking up, It's we're in my library, and I was researching something called dark academia. And they were talking about how you can do color blocks with your books. And so I redid all mm-hmm. of my bookcases. And it really helped me because when I felt out of control, things that were happening in my life, Mm -hmm. this gave me a modicum of control. And I felt like, ah, I can breathe again. I controlled something. It looks great. It looks really nice. It really does. I mean, I noticed it when I came in. It's, it's, everything is in its place. It's very purposeful. Yes, it was. It was. Yes. Should I tell them what I told you that I did? Is it silly? (laughs) It's silly, but I'm going to say it. Say it. Okay. So you guys know that I love Annie Sullivan, (laughs) right? And so I've got two books up here that are, it's Helen and Teacher and then Beyond the Miracle Worker, the one I talked about before. And Benjamin Franklin, I mean, no hate to anybody that loves Benjamin Franklin, but I started a biography on him and I, he wasn't my favorite fella. And they're both in the section for historical figure biographies. Right. And I was just like, you know what, Annie, you don't have to stand next to this man. <laughs> so I put space between her and Benjamin because I was going through some stuff and I thought, Annie, you don't have to go through this too. <laughs> and then I'm also a huge fan of Zelda Fitzgerald. Mm-hmm. And so I have a book about her and I have a book about F. Scott. I did not put those two together. Like she don't have to you deal are not with him. A, you are not a fan of F. Scott. I am not a fan of F. Scott. Again, no hate to anybody that is. I just don't like him. And so I thought in the afterlife, girl, you ain't got to stand by him. <laughs> So that was my my two things. Nothing else is weird like that. But this is the one little moment that I was like, I'm I'm dealing with something, and girls, I'm gonna protect you. I love how you're judgmental. I was your, very judgmental. Literary I um, was. organization, but it okay. made me feel good to like just be there for them. Yeah, they I don't even it. know. They have no idea. That, no, of course not. <laughs> of course not. They're books, but right. yeah, I felt really good. Well, moving back to the yeah, the, the point, coloring for just the a moment. Point. No, I have done the coloring. Have you not? Um, I did coloring when. I was way younger. I had a Beauty and the Bees coloring book that I colored and I have adult coloring books now, but you know, something that I did more of is I painted rocks. Oh, okay. Yeah. And again, I think it went with my, cause my mom was like, you need something besides theater. Mm-hmm. You've got to do something that's your hobby. That's not theater related. And so one thing that she wanted me to do is she wanted me to learn to crochet ah. or knit. Okay. And that was a terrible idea because we not got your thing. No, my brain just just went on the fritz because hmm. we got I don't even know crocheting for dummies it's something where it's it's the little pegs and you just have to oh, wrap string okay. around yeah. it but you have to do it in a certain pattern and Brian got the biggest laugh out of me because there was one night where I was just trying and I was it was clear <laughs> I was struggling so hard and he's like how you feeling how are you feeling <laughs> how's that anxiety how's, how's that, that stress, stress? <laughs> it's, it's horrible it's still in there and I said nope I'm gonna paint rocks and what ended up happening is I think because I'm so detail oriented the little uh-huh. tiny rocks and I had such a jolt of joy after I painted this little rock I was like mm. I love it but you know I haven't had a lot of time to do that yeah. since we started a podcast but this was pre-podcast life I yeah. just loved it it just all the stress eased away when I painted my little rocks yeah I get that because I have tried the coloring too in fact I went and you know ordered off Amazon some of the, like the nicer right. coloring pens and just this past Christmas I bought myself and my daughter and Camden's girlfriend Bree I bought them a little uh-huh. coloring you know thing because I don't I don't know that I ever intentionally think about it as stress Mm -hmm. or anxiety relief but it is fun and it is calming well for me even with the coloring I was so organized with Mm -hmm. the colors it would just be like this one has to go here this one so I think my actual stress relief is organizing yeah I think that's what I. that's your thing yeah You, you like to feel like you're in control I do yeah. Well, I actually Googled. I was like, I wonder if this adult coloring would be considered a form of art therapy. I don't know why I wouldn't. Well, no. Technically, they didn't seem to think it did qualify. I, I kind because of because the art was through. already there, and you're just filling in the color. Yes, I think okay. it's that it's already too structured, mm. rather than letting you be expressive enough mm. yourself. However, I did see one article published just a month or so ago that referenced some studies that said even if you're not going to call it, you know, technically art therapy. There are studies that literally say it does help reduce stress and anxiety. It's, it's a like calming thing to do. Art therapy light. Kind of. But all this to say, this helped me to think 
about Mm -hmm. art therapy. Uh, First of all, I want to know more specifically about what it is. But also I was like, I get it. Because as you said, I am not a super craftsy person, Mm -hmm. but I have friends who do a lot of very artistic things, very um, craft oriented things. And it brings them joy. Like I see them, they are happier when they are doing Mm -hmm. those things. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of fed into this idea of, well, that helps me understand how art therapy could be really valuable to certain people. Right. You've yeah. seen my, we shared my mom's paintings from Rebecca from a couple mm-hmm. weeks ago, the Vincent Van Gogh episode. And I would love to be able to do that, but I don't have the patience to learn and put all of that effort into it. And that's her thing. And I mm-hmm. think it's wonderful. And I support that. And But I just don't think it transferred into my brain. Mine went more mathematical, mm-hmm. which is odd yeah. because I'm not very great at math, but it went through color and like sorting and decorating. That's what I enjoy mm-hmm. doing. I yeah. really enjoy home organization. Nice. Well, from the Psychology Today website, here is the definition they offer for art therapy. Art therapy involves the use of creative techniques such as drawing, painting, collage, coloring, or sculpting to help people express themselves artistically and examine the psychological and emotional undertones in their art. With the guidance of a credentialed art therapist, clients can interpret the nonverbal messages, symbols, and metaphors often found in these art forms, which should lead to a better understanding of their feelings and behavior so they can move on to resolve deeper problems. Mm. Nice definition, but we are fortunate today, Ashley, because I haven't told you this. No, yeah. But we are going to hear from an actual art <gasps> therapist. What? That's I cool. I know. I thought I would surprise you. Yeah, I'm not allowed to check the email until she, <laughs> she tells me to. <laughs> well, I have a friend named Renee mm-hmm. who works as a mental health consultant in our school district. And so I was asking, you know, do you happen to know any art therapists? And she put me in contact with her friend, Mackenzie, who is a licensed art therapist. Well, I reached out to Mackenzie and she was kind enough to answer some questions Neat. via audio tape that I am going to share with you. And she had some wonderful insights, which of course, you know, you you would expect. I mean, she is living this. She yeah. is in the field dealing with young people every day. That's neat. Yeah. Well, first, let me share just a little bit about her background, which is so interesting. She actually became interested when she met an art therapist while she was living on a ship through WKU's Semester at Sea Study Abroad Program. Oh, wow. That led her to pursue her master's in art therapy at U of L, where she emerged with a license as both an art therapist and a clinical counselor. It was wow. it was like a dual thing. Oh. Mm-hmm. She worked five years at a local psychiatric hospital Ooh. where she had a lot of experience. That mm-hmm. was, you know, there were lots of challenges there, people who were yeah. really struggling. Yeah. But then she moved from there and spent a brief time working as a mental health consultant, actually in my school system, during COVID, during mm-hmm. the pandemic, mm-hmm. before moving to where she is now, which is a private practice. Now, recognizing that she has worked with so many young people in so many different settings, I actually started with a question where I just wanted to to kind of get her take on the issue at hand. So my first question to her was simply, what are a few of the big challenges that you feel our young people face today? And how big a need is there for support to be provided to our young people? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to let you hear what Mackenzie said in response to those questions. Oh, some of the biggest challenges facing young people today. I think that the pandemic has been the biggest or one of the biggest stressors that young people have faced recently. I think it was a shared traumatic experience that the entire world faced and that effect may have looked different for different people, but I do think it was traumatic, especially for kids who were not only isolated from friends and important adults in their life, but also from education, from other family members, from mental health services, but they also may have dealt with loss, with um, anxiety about the pandemic. I have a lot of kids I work with who are feeling very anxious about what the future looks like and what they are able to do about it. So kids have faced these huge, massive things in the short years they've been alive and often aren't aware of how they can affect change or need support in figuring that out. Overall, I see a huge spike in anxiety, depression, suicidality in the kids that I work with and 
I mean, I cannot understate the support that's needed for that. I enjoy working with the kids that I'm able to now, but so much more support is needed at home, in schools, in legislation, everywhere. Despite some really amazing people working in some of these spaces to support kids and their mental health, it the need is still not seen by those who have power to change things. Um, and that's really frustrating as a therapist. It's almost as if we started to become aware of mental health and children's needs. And now that things have started to settle down, it's no longer a priority or not enough of a priority. Also, I think I meant to say I cannot overstate earlier. So I thought that was interesting to hear firsthand from, you know, a therapist, a counselor who works with kids all the time. Some of the things Mm -hmm. that are that I I never would have thought about that idea. We, We say this so often, but their understanding of the issues in the world and their feeling that they have no control to do anything about it and how that would weigh on them. Right. These little, when I say little minds, I don't mean small minds. Mm -hmm. I just mean these little thinkers that are just thinking and worrying about these big problems that are so overwhelming. Right. And and you don't even realize they're on their radar yet. Mm -mm. Nope. Nope. I thought it was also interesting her point at the end where she said it seemed that the mental health of our young people was really high on everybody's consciousness during COVID. Not that necessarily everybody was getting help, but it was like something being talked about a lot. And I think it's because they were spending more time with the children because the children were home. So they were seeing it. You know, when they're at school, you don't really, you see them for X amount of time during the day. You may see them at night and it's not coming up. You have a school, it was fine. Mm -hmm. And then you go on and have dinner and do your family activities or not, or whatever your life is. And it's not, they're not in your everyday life. And now some of the parents were staying home and having to educate the kids at home or helping. And, mm-hmm. and now it's like, oh, wait, this is this is what you're dealing with. But now that, as she said, now that things are going back to sort of, then some things have changed. It is kind of falling back off again because mm-hmm. you're falling back into that old routine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think it is easy to assume everything's better when it just looks better on the surface. Because right. even at school, when we first came back after we were allowed to return to schools, you know, post some of the, you know, the heavy pandemic quarantining, it's still it looked concerning because you had kids separated by so many feet. Mm -hmm. You had people, kids weren't in groups or talking with each other as much because everybody had to be so separated. Mm -hmm. And so then you were noticing, you know, things like kids are not as social or I'm not hearing kids speak out as much or, you know, so like it was in your face. Mm -hmm. Well, now in a school, everything looks really normal and kids Mm -hmm. look happy and everybody's Mm -hmm. talking and they're working together. But what's under the surface that you're not aware of? Right. Mackenzie also answered the second question I asked, which is where she gives a beautiful description of art therapy from her perspective, kind of lets us see it a little bit better by giving some examples. So let's listen to her second response. So art therapy, I like to describe it as using art materials to help people express themselves. So getting what's going on inside your head or in your body out on paper or in clay or whatever material we happen to be using. Um, And this is a really great way to explore that connection between your mind and your body and maybe take a step back, look at things from a distance or really get into a flow state where your anxiety is lowered or um, you feel more comfortable talking about something or not talking about something. Oftentimes there's a lot of silence in the sessions that I have because some things you can't talk about or are too hard to talk about or you're not ready to talk about it, but you might be able to show me what that looks like. And so, you know, every session is different. Every person is different. And I provide materials and either give directive or don't give directive based on either what I think that person needs in the moment based on our relationship or what they think they need. So maybe just for example, one day I have a kid come in and I I just work with kids now, even though I've worked with all ages in the past, but I'll have a kid come in who's either really upset or pretty aggressive or um, just feeling angry. And maybe we get out some clay and we start pounding on the clay because that is a great way to release some energy and kind of 
calm the nervous system down to ground somebody or maybe I have someone who creates a creature or a monster to represent a feeling that they have and then we can interact with that creature um, and describe that creature or create a story with that creature that otherwise they they wouldn't know how to put their experience or their feeling into words I always love when they give examples that helps me so it much does. to it understand what it could look like what are your thoughts about that I thought it was interesting how she talked about the clay and pounding out your mm-hmm. feelings and creating a monster and actually yes. giving it a form and talking about that that was something I'd not heard of before it made it so concrete for me and I mm-hmm. could see how that could open a door for a child who yeah, was especially having children yes I mean all of a sudden it's an outlet to mm-hmm. allow you to to verbalize or to express something that you might not be able to communicate or you right. might not have even known was there right I was kind of joking about Zelda earlier with my silly book organizing but one thing that reminded me is she did do art therapy as well oh. because part of part of and again not to not to go down a rabbit trail with her but part of her issue and, and they were both they both had flaws but a lot of what happened with her and F. Scott is he was very emotionally abusive toward her and the art therapy really helped her to heal mm. from that and she was interested her paintings were very interesting but they were full of emotion and something that happens with the art or any kind of therapy is once you get it out it's not in your body anymore and it is not causing you harm inside it's kind if of you're, festering yeah festering you're holding it in it can mm-hmm. affect your health it can affect everything in you so once you have got this out that's one of the best benefits of the art therapy is now it's not inside of you Mm. it's out and that's what made me think of when she said we physically made the monster Mm -hmm. it's out the monster's out out. now yeah well you also just did a beautiful segue because the next question i asked her was about the benefits oh so we'll, we'll listen to that response now some of the benefits of using art therapy with young people is that i think as humans we naturally are creators and creative and want to express ourselves and as we get older unfortunately that isn't fostered and maybe we stop creating or we stop expressing ourselves but kids often are naturals at art therapy and really take to it you know with younger kids a lot of times play is the way that they process things and learn and so I incorporate play into my sessions. Now I'm not a play therapist, but I will use some play techniques along with art therapy. And that's just how kids explore and understand things. It's like a different language using the art materials as their language instead of words. And so, you know, if someone, say a teenager is resistive to talking to someone about their feelings or what's going on with them, sometimes art can be that point of connection. Now, it's not a perfect fit for everybody. You know, if someone really hates it and just is going to refuse to participate, then it's probably not a good fit. But I think that most people could benefit from art therapy if they were given the opportunity. Some challenges that I've faced are oftentimes getting the adults in the room on board with what we're doing or even, you know, other professionals that don't yet understand what art therapy is or what I'm doing with my work. I also think challenges have been really specific to the places that I've worked. So working in the hospital, you know, safety is a huge issue. And so you can't use all art materials. You have to be really careful about what you use. And I got really good at working in groups while I was there. But then I shifted to you know, the school system, and that looked really different. And then shifting to private practice and working just with individuals. So it's been a learning curve for me um, as I've moved through my career and also adjusting my expectations of what my, the therapy that I'm providing is going to look like. When I worked at the hospital, I ended up working a lot with one unit of kids who had either autism or intellectual or developmental disabilities and they ended up being my favorite group of kids to work with. The most beneficial thing for those kids ended up being using the process of art making as therapy rather than us sitting and having really in-depth conversations about you know, what is your art telling me or what are you trying to express? So just changing my expectations of what my work looked like. 
thought that was really interesting mm-hmm. what she shared, yes. the way she has to modify. Change. Yes, mm-hmm. modify how she's going to approach different things based on circumstances. Mm-hmm. And, you know, but also the part at the end, I think that goes back to what we said earlier. We were talking about the process of creating art can be therapeutic or calming right. or stress reducing. But I love what she said. She said, I guess it sounds to me that, that technically it is supposed to get you to express and yes. actually communicate and, and deal with these things that are happening. But then she clarified, but then in some circumstances, just the process of creating the art itself was the valuable part. Right. Yeah. Right. And I think that's the whole point of it all, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, for our final word from Mackenzie, I asked if she had anything else that she would like to offer. And here is what she said. Art therapy is for everyone. It's not just for kids. We work with all ages, all sorts of populations, inpatient, medical hospitals, in prisons, in schools, in private practice, all over the place. Basically, anywhere you might get traditional talk therapy, you could get art therapy. A big thank you to Mackenzie Rich. Thank you so much for sending in your audio clips and sharing your insights and your expertise Mm -hmm. with us. I don't know how it was for you, but that was really illuminating for me. It really was. Yeah. Yeah. You don't ever think it's not our life, you know, so we don't put a lot of thought into it, but it tells you what's going on out there. Armchair psychologist. I feel like we've been kind of armchairing a little bit all the way through. We really have, yeah. But to wrap it up, I'll just ask you that question. This idea of art as therapy, Mm -hmm. is that something that really had been high on your radar before? Or what have you taken away from this episode that surprised you or that was really new? Well, I think what has surprised me is how much it's needed. We talk about in a very general sense, you and I are both in the arts and we talk about Mm -hmm. the arts are important. You know, you just have that general vague, they're very important Mm -hmm. and they're always kind of low on the totem pole of what people think about, but we just kind of know it's important because Mm -hmm. we're in the field. But to hear how it affects lives Mm -hmm. really affirms to me, oh yeah, this really is important. What we're doing, and I'm not lumping myself in with these ladies, I'm saying like what we as a collective, people Mm -hmm. who are in the arts, it really is important important because it it can change lives and you just need that reminder every once in a while you kind of get in the rut of it and you need that oh yeah this this really is essential yeah I think my idea is actually very similar to yours the thing that struck me which was I think I tend to come at arts from a personal perspective Mm -hmm. I know how much I love and enjoy them right and I also know just kind of you know, from the philosophical standpoint, I've always heard how the arts are valuable in in fostering creativity and critical thinking. And, Mm -hmm. you know, it it helps your academics. But to really step back and think about them as something that affects mental health and social development, all those things, Mm self-esteem, I never really thought about it that intentionally. Right. Especially in the second case, I think the the individuals that she works with, it's as it's very important to them to create something and go, I did that. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what that's what I did. I created that. That's because of me. Yes, I loved what she said that we are by nature creators, but Mm -hmm. that we tend to lose that as we get older, we lose the time we don't create the time. And there's all of this like I I do devotionals every morning. And it's always reading about like, slow down, because Mm. by doing less, you're going to be doing more. Mm -hmm. And you're getting your mind cleared, and you're able to just actually enjoy life instead of just rushing through life. And I think our therapy is part of that enjoyment of life we're supposed to enjoy life yeah well on that note Mm -hmm. this was an interesting episode very different you know it's funny we when we started this podcast I would never have anticipated an episode on art therapy but how fascinating how about our cheers going to Jennifer Ella and Mackenzie absolutely cheers to you ladies cheers If you love what we do, please rate and review our show. Or you can become a supporter by making a donation through buymeacoffee.com slash scandalwaterpod. Whether a single gift or a recurring monthly donation, it would go a long way towards supporting our work and allowing us to keep the tea brewing. At our website, www.scandalwaterpodcast.com, you can submit questions or your own story ideas, access our sources and show notes, see the merch we offer for sale, and more. You can Join the Scandal Water community through our Scandal Water Podcast Facebook page or follow us on Instagram or TikTok at Scandal Water Podcast. This episode was executive produced by Candy Thomas, that's me, and Ashley Raymer Brown, that's me. 
It was researched and written by Candy Thomas and edited by Ashley Raymer Brown. A special thank you to Josh Martin, who wrote, composed, and performed the Scandal Water theme and other music. Matt C. Adams, who created the artwork, and Joshua Reith, who designed our website and provides ongoing technical support. As a reminder, this podcast is purely for entertainment purposes. The thoughts and opinions of the host during each episode of Scandal Water are their own and do not reflect the opinions of any future guests, advertisers, or clearly professional psychologists. Thanks for listening.